I finished watching the movie two minutes ago. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're I on. left myself two and a half hours and – You better pull your weight with some – Pull your weight with some Hitler jokes. Yeah, seeing as it's no, come on, Tim. <laughs> seeing as it's fresh in your mind, you should you should really be able to carry this episode of Seti Bimco to the Revenge. I did see we're big in Australia now. Yeah, thank thank you, our Australian listeners. Yeah, either they love Hitler jokes or <laughs> Jeez, that's South America. <laughs> But you know what? Well, I don't know. Australia is kind of, you know, that's Southern Hemisphere, too. I don't know. Um, although I'm wondering, like, we don't know exactly where they are in Australia, do they? So I'm wondering if it's no. like 42 university students all in the same program. And it's like they're doing like media studies. And we're the example of like what same not to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, do not, if you get into production, this is what you should not do, which I think we could work to our advantage. We could like be so bad. We could like have this cult following. We could be like Ed Wood's oh, wow. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Like they will be playing Seti Vimco decades from now. You know, I think that would be right. awesome. Or it's a cult. A cult. It's, all their fans are in one cult that they have yeah, to listen to. there you That's go. part of their regimen. Oh. They're, they're brainwashing. And so one of us is maybe like the Antichrist for them, the... Maybe. Let me get to the song so I can introduce the show. Oh, I can start the show with a joke. I like the yeah. way Kevin Cablasto did that last week. Let me start that to go into the song. All right, let's, what, oh, let's what, hear it. What kind of greeting does the priest get from its dog? It licks his balls. Jeez. Oh, Is that right? What kind of greeting does the priest get from his dog? No, he gets a Catholic a cat on uh, his balls. That sucks. Oh, that totally damn. sucks. It's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. This time, we're getting personal. Send us your credit card numbers. Hey, it's the Seti Bimco. I have a question. I mean, Seti Bimco, you, part two, The Revenge, the show that Tay dreams about. Revenge sequels that were never made. Were never made. Now you can ask me. Uh, are you making these jokes up, Tim, or are these jokes that you found in, like, an old book? I wrote that one. It's good. I wrote so that we'll one. So we'll see this in the pages of The New Yorker. So let, me, uh, let me read oh, you one I read. I, 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 like, I, I, like, I like this one. I uh so a priest walks into a bar and he looks at the ugly walls and says to the bartender, my son, you must repaint. Oh, my Lord. Uh... <laughs> I did write that one. That's AI. Speaking of Australia, <laughs> let's let's get let's let's let's, you know, make a real sharp turn here. Speaking of Australia, you know, Queen yeah. Elizabeth was on the five dollar bill in Australia and they're not going to put Charles on it. Ooh. Yeah. How a, come? Uh, they're going to put an Aboriginal person on there. I think they're, I, there's a big oh. Republican movement down there. And uh, I think, I don't know, you know, there's not quite the, the link Republican. to England there once was. And like many countries in the world, Canada, Canada's questioning the monarchy now. Because back in, there was About a time. fucking time. There, well, there was they a time up. where the majority of people in Canada were of English descent. So they felt a connection well, to the monarchy. They, and now they're yeah. much more, Tim, I'm finishing my point here. If you would, I know just let me <laughs> I'm waiting. Mr. Noda, car, Mr. Noda, all cartoon boy here. As a sir, cut me off before I can finish my thought. Go. He's going to mute you. I totally forgot my thought. Never mind. I don't really even have a point. You said Canada was, Tim was question, say. questioning the monarchy. No, well, Canada Canada's getting much more diverse now. Yeah. They're still going to keep Charles on the coins in Australia, apparently, but they're just not going to put him on the $5 bill anymore. Yeah. Is Can he pissed? Canada. I don't know. I, you know what? I think he just, I don't think he really wanted this job. I think he really enjoyed just being Prince of Wales more than he, right. you know, he got to have an opinion. He got to pursue his environmental things and. Your oh, wait, and sick. Prince Charles, or King Charles, I guess, if you're listening, write a letter to us here at Seti Bimco. Seti Bimco, Bimco with an E at the end. 
Yes. Tell us what you think. Say who's got the best revenge fantasy. What do you think about Tim's incessant bringing up of <laughs> the villain of the 20th century? What do you think about all these things? Let us know, King Charles. Let me get other business out of the way. All right. Sorry, that's a bad segue. But yeah, it was terrible. I'm picking the wild card question because we Ooh, watch a movie card. every week and we say to ourselves, what character from this movie would be most likely to, can I pick it out of a jar? Ooh, most likely to be on the cover of Playgirl or Playboy. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> John's already sad. No. Well, no. <laughs> no, I got something, but I mean, it's not, I don't know how funny it is. I was going to say Canada. You got something, but you don't um, like it. You know, we have, we have time to change. You don't have to go with that first impulse. Yes, I do. Oh, well, Tim, you're talking about John. Sorry. sorry, I got distracted. I was talking to I, Tim. I know. I know that you're a man completely driven by impulse Me? drives. Like, there's no way to to stop you from doing something. <laughs> Is that my siren again? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, Tim. Are you? Do you live near a hospital? I'm asking a serious question. I do. Here. I do. Okay, that's okay. Do. That's what it is. Then okay. You also <laughs> commit a lot of crimes, though. Yeah. That's I true. He's constantly... I live by the hospital. Okay. Okay. Well, that explains it then. No. No, that's fine. Every other day, I run into a person who's like, I just got released from the hospital. Uh, I just need $5 to get a taxi to go home. Could you give me $5 to my taxi to go home? And then the I see hell, that same person. Where the hell are they going? Street? Down the street? I mean, she yeah, you $5 could, cab. $5, you could walk. You could walk to wherever $5 is and get you in the cab. And you'd be there no, 20 John. minutes before you flag down the cab. What kind of lame ass? I'd be like, look, well, you're a fucking liar here. Here's the, here's the $5 just for being so fucking creative. <laughs> No, I know they're lying because I see them next week and the week after. Same person. Maybe they just yeah. get hospitalized a lot. I did. I did. Ooh. I did have to correct a homeless person. I don't know why. Normally, I'm just like, like normally oh, I'll geez. give them a buck or if I have any change in my pocket. But I, but they they told me a story. And you know what? You're going to ask me for specifics now. I don't have it on the tip of my brain. But they told me a story one week that was a total 180 contradiction of what they told me the week before. And I, I called him out. I'm like, well, you told me last week that, you know, it wasn't your son who had cancer. It was your daughter who had, you know, whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, look, just I, just I, I need a dollar. You don't have to come up with the story anymore. So I just gave him a dollar. Oh. Yeah. What was their reaction to that? Were they like appreciative that you paid so much Wait, attention you know to the story? I didn't really stick around to like, because, you know, they might have gotten angry. I think they were just sort of, I don't think they knew what to say. That somebody yeah. actually called them out. Because I think, gosh, and here I am. I'm bro I, I always say don't paint with broad strokes. But I think All that people a lot of bad. homeless people are um, relying on people's discomfort. Mm, Do you sure. know what I'm saying? Or maybe sometimes even fear that they yeah. won't say anything. They'll just give them the money or they'll just walk away and not make a scene. And I didn't make a scene, but I just called them like, look, dude, you told me the exact opposite story last week. What the hell is it? Mm -hmm. I said, here, that's here's interesting. A, yeah. I said, here, here's a buck, but you know, just say, Hey, you got a buck. You don't what? need to give me a story. Here's $5. You be honest with me. And I'll be honest with you. If I have a buck, I'll give you the buck. If I don't have the buck, I'll say, Hey man, I don't have a buck on me and I'll walk away. See if he'll clean your gravestone for a buck that you got to clean every week. No, this was uh, this was this was not around here. Oh, all right. I think fear and discomfort is what also drives most of our audience to listen. So I'm going to assume that we are the official podcast of unhoused people. I'm telling you that we got to shorten these up because their batteries are going to their battery on their phone is going to wear out. They must have like. They must have really good batteries in the homeless camps in Australia. Hence our they must. Boom leader, 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 leader. I'm telling you, we're part of a media say We are being made so much fun of in Australian <laughs> higher learning right now. Can I tell you a true story about the way co like schools work in Australia? A true sure. story. So, yeah, I was contacted a while ago by some official government entity of Australia mm -hmm. wanting to give me uh, quite a bit of money. Because someone used photocopies of one of my books in a school. Oh. And like Australia like actually was going out of its way, like hunting me down. Like and I ignored this so many times because I figured it was a scam. Yeah. And I even like my agent like looked into it. She's like, no, this actually seems to be real. Like they wanted to give me like a big wad of money just because someone there used my books in a classroom. Well, did and you? I like I don't I don't think it was like at a fancy level. Right. I think it's just like they're like, well, yeah, like, well, we have to pay this person. 
which is so like did, amazing. Did they contact wonder, the publisher? Or did you get the money? Uh, they contacted my publisher. They contacted my agent. They contacted me. I really did a good job of not responding. I wonder. Was, I, wonder was, I wonder. If it was, I wonder if it was. You think it was one of the graphic novels? You think? It, I wonder if it was the Vander Bogart. Yeah, no, the Vander Bogart uh, graphic novel. You know the first. No, it was specific. It was. Yeah, that would make sense. It was Hera, my uh, oh, really? the third oh, okay. book in Olympians. Oh, okay. It was. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it it was very official once I finally looked at this thing. Hmm. So I don't know. Australia seems pretty cool. I know there are a bunch of marsupials and they have didgeridoos and (laughs) dingoes everywhere, but they treat artists right. Yeah. But what if they like sent you like a bunch of checks that were like only worth a few dollars? Remember that episode of Seinfeld where Jerry kept getting those checks sent to him in yen? But they were only worth like, you know, five, ten dollars. Do you remember this episode? And he had a sign on the checks and he like his hands were cramping up. Oh, no, anyway, I guess you just never mind. Anyway. I only watch reruns of Mod, John. It's probably true. <laughs> but I just have a little post. Oh, Tim's got something. Oh, little, Tim, oh. Tim's got a little post. Last, just... To last week. Last week, uh-huh. we watched uh-huh. She Devils on Wheels. Uh-huh. The worst, worst garbage, garbage movie. And we had Kevin Cablasto here as a guest. And it was April Fool's. And while he was recording with us, we, we uh, upper decked his, his toilet and everything as a joke. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun having him here and this went by very fast john i mean george pointed out that one of the girls in the biker gang in the movie was called supergirl and that yes. was in the editing i heard that and i checked it and that's true and john and i watched I don't lie. an older herschel gordon lewis this is a man who made a lot of schlock movies we watched one of his other movies called just for the hell of it Mm-hmm. And I went back and checked because I remember this, and I turned on the uh, captions. The, there's a scene in the bar where the guy rips this girl's sweater, and she's like, "Hey, what'd you do?" And then she she looks at her rip and says, "The bra." They didn't even mention my super my supergirl bra, and I'm thinking, does he have a supergirl fetish or is he a fan? Must be. And Must be. Uh, so I see if I can pay someone to watch all those movies and find out because I'm not gonna. Well, the uh, super <laughs> I forgot it's about that. Supergirl in two right. of them. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So that's all. I just wanted to. Uh, okay. Well, okay, that's it. So we don't have time to uh, talk about the movie this week. Anyway, so what's on next week, Tim? Uh, the revenge sequel is Me Take Your Revenge on Tim. So John picked this movie. I did pick this movie. Uh, I mean, you have to you have to talk us through it then, John. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Uh, it's, called, <laughs> it's called Look What's Happened to Rosemary's Baby. Um, it's a 1976 American made-for-television horror film and a sequel to Roman Polanski's 1968 film Rosemary's Baby. Um, the only original person from the only person from the original movie is Ruth Gordon, who plays yeah, Minnie Cassidy. That she won she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for Rosemary's Baby. So, wait, really? Really. Uh, so there's, Man, there's, I couldn't decide if she was awesome or terrible in this movie. They just kind of put her in. She just like basically had like a lot of one line zingers. I thought I didn't think yeah. she yeah. was. Yeah, they they, they, even she, met. they really should have. But then, of course, I'm thinking at this point, I don't know how old Ruth Gordon must have been. She had to have been pushing 80. So maybe she yeah. couldn't like, you know, she's probably going to do a lot of physical scenes. So basically, she just kind of show up, give a line. I'm guessing maybe. I don't know. Did you even know this existed, George? Because I didn't even realize. I don't. I think I knew in some distant recess of my brain that there was some sort of sequel to Rosemary's Baby, but I maybe knew more about the book. Well, Son of Rosemary. I was going to say this is not to be confused with the actual 1997 novel by Ira Levin called. 97? It was that late. Yeah. It was actually Ira Levin's last novel. Which it uh-huh. got totally panned by the critics. Um, oh, it was, it was, it wasn't really, it wasn't really that. You yeah, know, it was, the, it, it, it was interesting. It, was, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the level of Ira Levin. You know, he just is he yeah. buried in Auburn? He is not buried in Auburn. No, <laughs> at least not that I'm aware of. I'll His name's that. not Murphy. Only people named Murphy are born in Auburn. <laughs> In Auburn. Actually, it's Walsh, wasn't it? Walsh. 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 Oh, pfft. I don't know. Irish names, <laughs> man. 
making references to past episodes. I don't think a lot of people know about this movie because it came out in 1976, and that was one year after the Pet Rock fad, and everybody was busy throwing out their <laughs> their Pet Rocks. Well, it was it was the ABC Friday Night Movie on October uh-huh. 29th. 1976. So it was shown Ooh. on Halloween weekend. Halloween. Oh my God. Nice. Yes. And in a well, little, um, just a little, uh, casting trivia from the original movie, um, three actresses that were considered for Rosemary and the original Rosemary's baby, which of course eventually went to Mia Farrow mm-hmm. were Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda would have made a good Rosemary. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Goldie Hawn. Eh. I don't mm-hmm. think Goldie Hawn. I don't know. Maybe maybe she would have surprised us all. I don't know. Maybe Goldie Hawn would have been the great like antithesis of the horror or something. I don't know. And the yeah. other person considered for the role of Rosemary was Patty Duke, yep. uh-huh. who plays Rosemary in this, in this movie as Patty Duke Aston. Yeah. And you know, Patty Duke really wanted that role in Rosemary's Baby really, really badly. In fact, the year before she had done Valley of the Dolls based on the novel by Miss Jacqueline Suzanne, in which she starred with Sharon Tate, who oh. was Rowan Polanski's wife. Well, when they were doing yeah. Rosemary's Baby, his fiancee. And Patty really wanted, Patty really wanted this. And she called Sharon. He said, Sharon, come on, put in a good word for Roman for me. Please, please, please. And Sharon Tate says, Patty, I'll do the best I can. And then about a month later, Sharon calls her back. She's like, Patty, they're going with Mia Farrow. I'm so sorry they're not interested in you. And Patty said to Sharon, Sharon, I could stab you multiple times and hung up the phone on her (laughs) and never (laughs) spoke to her again. Wow. (laughs) So if I'm understanding this, you know, nobody really knows every single person that was part of the Charles Manson family. Uh, no, we can't say anything. No, that would be libel, George. That would be libel. If we but, said that Patty Duke was at 10050 Cielo Drive on the night of August 8th into the morning of August 9th, 1969, that would be libel. And we could probably be sued by Patty Duke to say. So we are not going to yeah. say that. Hmm. We're just Let's gonna- go for another libelous route then. So. Patty Duke Aston, married to John Aston, yes, a.k.a. Yes. Gomez, from original um, Adams Family. Right. And She's who playing also played, Rosemary in this. And who also played Riddler when Frank Gorshin was not available for a couple episodes mm-hmm. of the Adam West. Yeah, because he was at John Wayne Gacy's house. We can't say that. Frank but, um, <laughs> Yeah, so John Aston is the father and, you know, of uh, Sean Aston uh, from the Goonies. The adoptive father. Yeah, okay. But I'm saying we're talking here, what we're dealing with here is, is there some sort of a Yeah, he's the adoptive father. Well Patty huh. Duke had it narrowed down. Patty Duke had it narrowed down to four men who could have been the father. Wow. Before Patty the Duke end, was she had it narrowed month. down to four men. At the time she no was way. married for I think like nine days to this guy. And later D uh, originally um, one of the contenders was Desi Arnez Jr. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Um, and in the well, end, with DNA, here's my theory. With in the end, with DNA DNA and the, the, the DNA a testing, <laughs> they nice. it was determined yet yeah, that yes, the man she was married to for nine days was in fact the father of Sean Aston. I think it was that it was that then with a DNA. Oh, you're gonna ask? Well, are you doing an English accent? You're gonna. He's, he's doing a fucking Australian, he's accent. Doing an Australian accent. Oh God! For our down well, here's my whole theory about this. Don't, don't do on, it, mate. Tim. Don't do it, Tim. Don't do it. Um, I think that Sean Astin's real dad is Satan because she played Rosemary. Yeah, let's, I think it explains a lot about his acting career. Let's get really past the, the, the beginning gonna, of the movie. Okay. Because there were Nazi, Nazi helmet storage. I can't help it. They were there. Oh, I noticed that too. That's not why I picked this movie. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I did not notice And there were swastikas on the we, wall of the nursery. Swastikas on the wall. Wait, really? Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, you didn't. Well, George, right. if, you had given me, if you had given yourself more than two and a half hours before airtime <laughs> to watch the movie, you may have had the time to notice these things. I'm not I'm not talking down to you. I I appreciate you being here every week. <laughs> I really do. Here's the part that I did notice that they actually – the, I don't. I. It's been years since I've seen the original Rosemary's Baby, which I think was a real mistake, 
because this movie really assumes you know that movie because I was lost a lot. Right. Oh. And, of course, that movie very famously closes with the lines with, like, what did you do to his eyes when yeah. she sees her baby the first time? And I'm excited. Yeah. I'm like, yes, we're finally seeing what this guy's fucked up eyes look like. Yeah. No. Man, this kid's just got normal. And they even play it in the beginning. They fucking play, yeah. I guess, an audio recreation. Yeah, about, a little bit tweaked. Yeah, with Patty like, like, well, He's got his father's eyes. And yeah, it's Patty Dookie doing it. Right. And then uh, he, his eyes, he's just got normal blue eyes. And I, I've never been so disappointed. Well, also you think yeah. you go red a couple of times. Also, you think about this. This TV movie came out eight years after the original. So probably a lot more people yeah. would remember the original in 1976 yeah. than they would in. Yeah, George. 2023. Yeah. Like, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, the, I don't know. You know, George. To be honest with you, I don't quite know what the producers were banking on on this <laughs> on this movie. George, George yeah, why was it a TV movie? I I would like to. Did anybody figure that out? Like, why did this? Because Rosemary's Baby was a big movie, right? Yeah, yeah big movie, wow. big novel. And, <clears throat> yeah, and then they wait like they sit on this thing for like eight years, and then they do a TV movie. Well. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they, just, maybe they just couldn't get a big studio to back it and distribute it. I mean, they, mm. I think I think probably what they did was they took a look at the script and said, we're not going to spend all this money. People are not going to flock to movie theaters to see this no. movie. Let's just show it on TV. At the time, I think at the time you're only competing with two other channels. That's true. You probably stand over at least at least before you air, you know you've got Who's sponsors, sponsors and movie? you're making money off of it. You know, so that was probably this that's one's probably had Tina, Tina Louise Ginger from Gilgan's Island and Ray Ray Milan, who, Island. Ginger, yeah, Tina, Tina Louise who could not <laughs> be bothered to do the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> On Gilligan's Island. I was excited to see her. She could do this. I was like, I feel this. like this is a famous person. I couldn't place who it was. I had to look it up. Uh-huh. I was like, oh shit, it's Ginger. Yeah, Ginger. She was also in the uh, original uh, wow. movie of the Star right. Food Wives. Another Irish no, woman. She was somewhere. good. She unfortunately just disappears from the movie. Yeah, but this yeah. movie didn't <laughs> yeah, have so anything uh, like along the lines of what I would call a linear plot. Yeah. Well. Well, and that's why every. I think that's why they I did everyone a special guest star. Did you notice that in the beginning? Oh my God. It's a special meal. Yeah, because you fast forward <laughs> through the credits because you're like, oh my God, we're recording in two and a half hours. I got to get through this movie. John, I'm going to you. Is that okay? What? 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 All, this, all this talk about the Son of Satan reminds me of a few weeks ago when we talked about Jesus. Let's, oh, yeah. Uh, I was just daydreaming about, daydreaming about it. They used to have like those big, like those big Barbie heads and the girls could. The girls, you know, it was just the head. And the girls could, like, yeah. smile oh, yeah. the hair. You get one of those big heads of Jesus, and then you get Jeez. the crown. You get the crown of thorns, you <laughs> stick that on. And then when you do that, like, the blood starts <laughs> dripping down the face. That would be cool. Don't cut any what of this. What if instead of just putting a crown on it? Don't cut any of this out. <laughs> what if it's like What if it's like a chia pet, but instead of growing, like, a mossy green plant life it grows the actual thorns oh huh? there's an idea so you have an agonized jesus head and like it actually grows spike <laughs> man we're gonna be canceled we are gonna be rich i tell you r-i-c-h rich <laughs> i like john's head idea but i think john's head should, well, i mean it should also scream when you put the, the throat the crown of thorns on it no there's a little recording voice that says forgive them oh, father they know not what they do Every time you put, every time you put, it looks like baby alive or something. Every time you put the crown on, you know, the blood starts oozing down the face and the voice I think. says, forgive them, Father. They, or like any, any quotes from like six, six different quotes that he said while he was hanging right. on the cross. What else does he say? I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe in that. He said, he says, How about this? this is, uh, like. I got a scratch on the left side of my nose. No, no, not there. A little bit lower. How about that there's one? The, there's the two guys that hang with him, and he says, "You'll be in heaven with me today." You know, you're 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 freaking. But not you. I talked about guy this with John. Did I talk about this with John, or did I cut it out? You did not talk about this with me because oh, I would have glazed right Jesus is on the cross, and he forgives the two guys hanging with him, and he doesn't even ask what they did. And I think I asked John, or did I ask you, George? Like. What if, what if he was a child molester? Would people, what, what would people be like, like hmm, I'm a child cannibal. Forgiven. I eat babies. Yeah, or he kills babies or puppies. I think people but, would be like, hmm, I don't know. I know. That's the basic tenet of Catholicism, though. I you know. can do anything you want. 
I'm I, I'm so afraid to mention this name because you bring him I'm up all the time and it's become a sickness for you. <laughs> but the great villain of the 20th century himself could be like, I'm sorry I engineered the Holocaust. And if he prayed and was truly repentant at the end of his life, Jesus would be like, well, I guess you got to go into heaven. Yeah. But this guy who wasn't sorry about his parking yeah. ticket, he burns yeah. in hell. Right. Yeah, it's rough. So, yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you're going to follow, follow the... Uh, I don't. Uh, anyway, the logic. I don't even want the logic is yeah, too. Jesus, Jesus too, got to heaven, too, and that guy he forgived. He's yeah. like, hey, and he's and he's like, what were you? What, he says, what were your sins anyway? And he's like, oh, I liked like just crushing puppies and kittens. And Jesus be like, Jesus, yeah. why did I forgive him? Yeah. <sighs> oh, could you make this? And then Jesus, said, and then Jesus said, Jesus Christ, yes. what the hell is Jesus? Me, what is going on here? <laughs> me, Christ. Me, Christ. <laughs> <Him>. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I think this is... So anyway, I, that was just, you know, we talked about Jesus. Dying on the cross and the crowns and everything. That, that was pretty good, right, John? Yeah, sure. Go, go, go back to talking about son of the, the <laughs> Rosemary's baby. What happened so to that, that baby? Oh, yeah, no, Rosemary's baby. Yeah, Rosemary's baby. Yeah, what, well, look what's happened to Rosemary's baby. What am I talking about, Rosemary's baby? Okay. So right. anyway, Pat, so they keep, call, they keep calling the baby Adrian. Do it. And and Rose, I keep wanting yeah. to say Patty Duke Aston. No, I'll, see, I'll just she's say Patty Duke Aston because she's not really Rosemary. In the, she, so Patty Duke Aston. Well, she's in oh, the book of Rosemary. Should we mention that? She's like his name is Andrew. His yeah. name's not Adrian. It's Andrew, and she's like even whispering to him, "Your name is really Andrew." So she escapes yep. from the the house of the estate where the coven is staying, this, and she tries to. Is it a funeral? refuge in a synagogue a funeral, slash it? storefront, and there's this big. Oh, I don't. I, I think it was just. I oh. think it was just. Um, I just assume that's Sabbath. how the movie. I think it was just like, like they were Jews praying on the Sabbath in churches in synagogues. That I was happy to see that though, because right, I feel know. like it's always bothered me. Like in vampire lore, for instance, where like you always see people like whipping out crosses to fight the vampires. You never see somebody wing a star of David like a shuriken at somebody. And I'm like, yeah, Never that's right. David. Oh, no, George. It's the word of God, the house of God. Yeah, let yeah. the synagogue work too. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Well, okay, that that's always been my argument. Like these people wearing crucifixes. And I'm like, if Jesus <laughs> comes back, do you really think he wants to see crucifixes? I'm just saying, you know what I mean? You know, call me crazy. I mean, he'd be like, what the fuck are you? What the fuck are you twisted people <laughs> doing to me here putting up all these crucifixes? He'd be more receptive to us. He'd be more receptive. I don't he think was he's Jewish. So. He'd be more receptive to a star of David. <laughs> I don't really quite. Oh, I guess they must get on a bus because later they're on a bus. So somehow they get out of this town. And the next morning, oh, yeah. they, um, Guy who is Rosemary's husband, Guy Woodhouse, in this movie, yep. not played by John Cassavetes, but played by George Maharis, is now a famous movie star. And you know what, George, you're absolutely right. You would have to really kind of know the first movie to get the second movie. Anyway, the premise I of the first look this movie, part up. the whole reason why, <laughs> the whole reason why Rosemary becomes the mother of Satan is because Guy, her husband, makes basically a Faustian deal. Yeah. Yeah. And an wants to advance his acting career. So the actor for whom he's understudying him on this Broadway play suddenly goes blind. Yeah. That was a reference. Okay. They mentioned that. I'm like, that's yeah. gotta be something yeah. that happened in the first well, one. Because you know, there's a, there's this one scene where Roman and, uh, Roman and, uh, mini call guy in Los Angeles. And they say something like, Boy, you've got those guys. 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 I hate to see what that Los Angeles son would do to it. And all of a sudden, well, then the eye, you you said the kid's (laughs) eyes weren't weird, but boy, his eyes started going weird. And did he look like he was melting? Did he look like he was melting? That was probably the you notice he was was slothered with either sweat or suntan lotion. Probably oil. I know know George. He was glistening before that. Like when we first met that guy, they weirdly zoomed in on his hairless chest and like. (laughs) He was clearly slathered in baby oil. I'm like, right. why are we? This is a weird view. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well he had just gotten a part on an episode of Maud, you know, because of his Faustian deal. <laughs> part of the deal is, yes, you know, part of the deal. <laughs> Guy Woodhouse would win three Oscars, but he also have to be a guest star <laughs> in a B. Arthur vehicle every other season. 
Oh man, that's rough. And oh, 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 nope. and your and your wife will give birth to the son of Satan. Blah blah blah. <laughs> right, um, right. Yeah. But um, so Mary so Ann. Anyway, so he, they tell him that you know they're missing and they're probably looking for. They're they're probably going to come out to L.A. to find refuge with him. And Rosemary does make a call to Guy while Adrian's playing with his car. And that scene was pretty cool, actually, where she's like, I'll kill him. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, basically like, yeah, yeah she's, going, yeah, she's going, she's going off the deep end. Poor Rosemary. She's going off. Yeah, the she, deep. She, she, so she says, leave $5,000 at 10 different locations, care of Jenner delivery. I'll get one of them at least. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. So anyway, but, the kid, while she's on the phone with guy, these kids are trying to steal Andrew or Adrian, whatever you want to call him, I'm trying yes. to steal his car, and he basically uses his powers. He doesn't kill him, and, but he yeah. like basically takes them out, like you know, like they're not injured, but he yes. like you know, basically whoops their ass. His his power, we should mention, is he he gets like his eyes do glow red, which is maybe a reference to his eyes, and he seems to be pretty strong. That's really the only things he ever really does. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, like he punches people, and they it, they do. The special effects are very six million dollar man, like slow oh, motion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. get it. I get it. It's good stuff. It, great stuff. And uh, best movie I've ever seen, maybe. So basically, and this is where we. This is where Tina Louise, aka Ginger from Gilligan's Island, aka Marjean, in this movie, she's a sex worker, and she has a little like camper trailer behind the bus stop. And excuse me, John, they call her a two bit hooker. That's two bit hookers at the PC. T- <laughs> That's what they call her. It That's changes from her. week Tim, to week. Tim, okay. Tim is so very anyway, So this two bit hooker named Marjean, <laughs> t- you know, it says hide out in my trailer. And this is yep. where you kind of start realizing that Marjean's in on it because she comes back and tells Rosemary that he killed the boys when yeah, nothing yeah. actually happened to him, that he broke their necks. Yeah. Can I interrupt? You may, George, of course. Now, my theory was when she walks over to see, cause like the, like Adrian beats up the kids and um, Patty Duke runs with Adrian back into the sex worker ladies trailer. And she's like, please go see if they're okay. And so the set, and so ginger from ginger from Gilligan's Island goes and looks and she sees what's happening. Here is nobody's hurt here, but she walks over to the phone. Mm-hmm. She hears, Did oh. they put a spell on her? That's what I, I wasn't or was sure. She, I think because so. I because then there was the weird line where the old lady's like, "Oh, wait, she what's she doing for us?" And they're like, "She's a two bit whore." Who want who do you want her to be? I think they took control of her brain. Yeah, well, probably. And then, of course, jumping ahead, she does get something out of the deal in the next mm-hmm. chapter of the movie. She's no longer living right. in a trailer. Oh, I missed that. She's no, oh, I guess she's yeah. no longer living in a trailer in the next chapter. Yeah. And she offers, and, uh, or on a deserted island, she's right, not there exactly. either. And uh, she is playing she for never, the Harlem She never does get to meet the Harlem Globetrotters, but no. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I'm she's not, like, by oh, the way, for, for fifty bucks, I'll get you on a bus heading north. And the bus comes. We're going to end this chapter now, Tim. The bus comes. <laughs> it gets on. Nobody's driving the bus. Rosemary gets no. on, the doors close, and it just drives off with Patty Duke Aston banging on the back window, calling out for Andrew. And that's the last you see of Rosemary. Yes. Well, weirdly, we we ride with her for a little bit, where she slowly walks up the bus. Yeah, yeah. And she sees there's nobody on. She pulls the curtain aside with the driver be. He's not there and screams. And I couldn't fucking believe that. that <laughs> I mean, she's one of the titular characters. That's how we fucking see her off. Yeah. Ah, well, that, but no. It's not – Rosemary's not the titular character. Rosemary's baby is the titular character. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, it's a little semantics, but she, her, her name appears in the titles. Okay. <laughs> she. It, it's – yeah, it was just shocking to me. It's like really that was the – like that must have been a case of bad budget-itis, right? They're or like, they realize, they're they really re- memorable. Or they, re- or they realized – Patty Duke Aston was so terrible at Rosemary that like over <laughs> the weekend they did an entire rewrite, 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 and they're going and they said we're going to ju- you're just going to do this scene, get on the bus, we'll pay you for all three episodes. Thank you, thank you for your time. Well, okay, you just brought up something I wanted to talk about. 
the fact that this movie was is weirdly structured. It's definitely not a three act structure. And in fact, it's divided, but it is divided into three books. Yes. Right. First one is called the book of Rosemary. The title appears and the famous, you know, a font evocative of the title font for Rosemary's baby. Second one is book of Adrian. Adrian. And the yeah, third yeah. one is the book of Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Yes. Right. Just worth mentioning because then we skip 20 years. Right. You skip 20 years. After, after Patty Duke rides off into the sunset and uh, her son has aged 40 years in that time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they don't expect us to believe this is the same well, guy. He's had, he's, he's, had a, he's, had a, he's he's had a rough yeah. life. He's the son of Satan. Come it's, on. He's had her. Uh, he's had her. Yeah. Um, anyway, now he is staying. He is living with Aunt Margin. At, yes. You know, I didn't write it. Is it Margin's Castle Casino? Is that the name of yes. the business? I wrote okay. it down somewhere. Yeah. Castle okay. Casino. I, I realize she that, is not aged at all. It's she is not aged. Tina oh, Louise yeah. has no, not but, aged. Um, it looks good. There you go. Basically, it opens up with Adrian joyriding with his friend Peter. The cops pull him over, and the friend Peter is behind the wheel, and they ask for his license, and they write him the ticket, and then Adrian gets out, turns around, and says, you know, hey, thanks for covering for me. So basically, yes. they switch they switch places after the cops pulled him over. And yeah, sure I definitely read them as a couple, too. Like They're a couple? I read it that way, hmm. right? I mean, I, I guess. I mean, I guess. I think there maybe there was so, some sort of underlying underlying homoerotic tension. I'm not sure. The friend Peter is a divinity school dropout. He talks mm-hmm. a lot about Jesus and coming over to the good yeah, side. He, yeah, he sucks. But maybe, but but maybe he, <laughs> he maybe he was like. At one of those pray the gay away camps, you know, as a kid. Yeah. And that was a tiny car. They you switched know, seats. The, the kind of, the kind that you know Mike and Karen Pence run now. You know, maybe, maybe that. <laughs> no, they don't. You know, do, maybe that's do they really I, run I, one of those? Uh, well, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I like your story. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but I do. So, Tim, you no. were pointing out the fact there's a small car, so they must have gotten very intimate in switching seats like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. That's right, a tiny nice. car. The police Same. pull over. Suddenly, they're in. The Somebody other gave someone a yeah. lap dance. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't. But you couldn't help but avoid it. I mean, you had to give someone a lap. He's dance. like, it's so weird. Why does your car have two stick shifts? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, so, uh, uh, so, so basically, like, do you want to say something, Tim? Look, we're not even letting Tim talk in this. Go ahead, Tim. You, <laughs> you said you're just chomping at the bit to get in here. Come on. What do you want to say, Tim? I was just gonna come on, say. Tim. Say something. Don't just don't don't let us talk over you. I was just say saying, something. A- no, Tim, Adrian's just say this guy who's conflicted, <laughs> and he doesn't know if he wants to be good or bad. And his friend thinks there's something up with them, and uh, that's our story structure. Tina yeah. Louise has an accent that comes and goes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a little. You didn't even pick it up well. Well, you probably nah. fast forwarded through the time, sh- and you, probably when you stopped, she wasn't using the accent because you probably. I was looking to see if she dropped her top. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yep. So his birthday's coming up, and he seems to dread it, and I don't know why. Because this was, this was uh, like, the, because uh, Uncle Roman and Aunt Minnie show up every year for his birthday. That's probably why he's dreading. Yeah, it. a real drag. Yeah. So do they straight up say is he thirty? Because there's the line that Uncle Roman has, like the other one didn't come into his powers till he was thirty. Yeah, yeah. I guess so, so. Is this his thirtieth birthday? It must be. Yeah, he's man. That guy needs to fucking grow up. Who stop riding around oh, doing joy riding with your friend Peter in the in the desert? Stop living with your mom. Go out and do something with your life. Well, you well, know, not your when, mom, you know you're, when you know you're going to be the Antichrist one day, you really don't have to take a like a like but a part time job. Yet? Like you don't have to take. Like he a, doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, he has no, no fucking think, idea. You he's know what d- I think? The more I think about it, I think he knows, but I don't. I think he realizes that he's not evil enough. Hmm. You know how like some of most of us one could argue he's not evil at all. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't you know, really like, do anything. How, like, you know, most of yeah. them, most of, mm. most people struggle with the fear that they are not good enough. Yeah. And this is a total 180. Here's somebody who is expected to be evil. And he feels that he is just he not feeling it. You know, he's not that evil. 
Mm. I think it was kind of evil because his his favorite song was Disco Duck. That, well, okay, there you go. Yeah. Well, of course, that was one of the signs. That, along with the four horsemen of the apocalypse, are the sign of the end of times. You are right. Yes. Yes. This was a pretty disco-y movie, which I wasn't expecting. Barely. Well, no cocaine. I mean, I, know, I thought the. Mo- I, I, thought think, the- I would argue the biggest set piece is when he gets painted like a mime and like walks around doing a weird yes. dance for like ten no, minutes. He was painted like Bob Dylan. He did that. No, he was painted like Marcel Marceau, who was originally <laughs> supposed who was originally supposed to play him in the movie. Oh, really? But really? they said, but well, Not anymore. But you know, Marceau Marceau, you know, thinking, well, they're hiring me for my mime skills, and never bothered learning the lines. So yeah, mm-hmm. so like week one of filming, oh god, they had Marcel <laughs> Marceau, and they're like, okay, Marcel, let's run your lines. He's like, lines, and so they're like, oh well, this isn't going to do. So they had to get this kid in. And then He's like, I feel boxed in by Satan. Yeah. And then realizing, you know, that Patty Duke Aston wasn't cutting it. They had, to, they had to rewrite her parts and just sent her on a bus. Yeah. There, there were a lot of problems plaguing this production. It was fraught with peril. It was fraught with peril. Anyway. So for some reason they have guy come and the friend Peter recognizes guy. He's like, why are we, you know, so basically, yeah, yeah. Long story short, they paint, they put him in like this, I don't know, like this, what was was it, a leotard? They paint him up in this Mm -hmm. Marcel Marceau makeup, and he basically hypnotizes everyone dancing and playing in the little music room. The music was kind of more late 60s than disco, but that's just my opinion. And you're probably right. Guy gets scared, runs away. Peter Peter cuts him off and says, you got to do something, you got to stop him. Uh, just before a bolt of lightning had hit the power lines, there's a live wire on the ground. Guy picks it up, which is very dangerous if you ask me. Yeah. But he picks it up and electrocutes Peter and kills him. And what snaps, um, what snaps Adrian out of his satanic reverie is he looks over and sees Peter Holding in the, the sign of the cross glowing. <laughs> right, glowing. The yeah, window. That, exactly. His electricity yep. is coursing through him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this actor, I think his name is Stephen McHattie. Yes. He's in the movie Pontypool, which I recommend. Um, he spends most of this movie, the most of his performance is staggering around like he's drunk. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like this entire scene, he staggers around like he's drunk. At the climax of the film, he staggers around like he's drunk. <laughs> well, you know. I think he just got <laughs> fucking loaded well, I mean, on when set. You, when, you get, when you get a call, you know, two days before you're supposed to show up on set, hey, Marcel Marceau isn't working out. We need you here on Monday. They're like, just learn your lines and just stagger around like you're drunk. Well, just just learn your lines. Like, That's more than we got out of our do. so. Pretend you're trapped in a glass box by Satan. Yes. So then the third book is the book of Andrew. And Andrew wakes up with amnesia in a, in a I guess, a mental hospital. He gets knocked out a lot. He gets he put does. under a lot. He trusts everyone. And next thing you know, he's poisoned. Right. He would- yeah. Yeah. Actually, every fucking scene, every book ends with him being knocked out and then waking up again. Yeah. This movie. This movie eh. sucks. He wouldn't survive a day in uh, Mr. Cook's <laughs> Mr. Cook's little town. No, he wouldn't. Yeah, he'd have a big R in him. <laughs> he Previous wouldn't. episode of Seti Bimco. Abby Ewing from Knott's Landing is the nurse named Ellen. But anyway. Wait, what's her name? Ellen. The actress's the name. name is Donna Mills. But she played Abby yeah. Ewing on Knott's Landing for years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> She was Gary's second. Husband. I saw the cast and saw Donna Mills and thought it was Donna Summer and got really excited. And then it was not. Yeah. And then I was very disappointed. Sorry, George. But he he trusts her right away, just like he trusts everyone. He has right. no satanic uh-huh. power of uh, of uh, reading people. Right. And uh, so basically, he he insists that his name is Andrew. He's having these flashbacks. Yes. Yep. Anyway, he's trying, he, he he gets out of his room. And the, apparently, like, his little lanyard badge sets off an alarm, and he goes running to the exit, and these two orderlies, like, come up. And, you know, as with standard psychiatric procedure in the <laughs> mid-'70s, they just, like, beat him to a pulp. I know. I was like, and, hey, uh, the hospital. <laughs> and uh, then he wakes up again. He regains consciousness <laughs> again. He, he's really hesitant to tell Ellen what he remembers about the cult. But long story short, she helps him get out. They go to this motel. Um, turns into a porn. Has, huh? It turns into a porn. 
Uh, it turns into a song. I was tricked into it's, slowing down here because I saw her take your top off. It's no summer. It's no summer camp, Tim. But no. But anyway, she gives him this uh, this this little bit of alcohol. She says that the guy in the convenience store said it was Greek, so I don't know if it was Uzo or anyway. She, basically, she drugs so, him and rapes him, and it turns out she's a member of the cult. She gets right. impregnated by him, and. She's not just a member of the cult. She's the granddaughter of the uh, of the cast of Eats or whatever the fuck. No, they, they tell are. that's the story they give when they visit her in the hospital. She, uh, she's just a recruit. Okay. She's just a recruit. And she's yeah. in the hospital because because um, they get out. What's his name? And this car comes and is trying to hit Adrian. And she's just standing there with this stupid grin on her face. And then suddenly yeah. she realizes the car is heading for her. And she like starts putting up her hands, like no, no, turn the other way. Bam! Gets hit by the car. <laughs> Adrian slash Andrew takes off, and he's like walking on. I guess like on this overpass or this road running parallel with a freeway, and he right, just right. kind of walks off into the night, and then. He's staggering. staggering. Staggering again. He's a great stagger in this movie. Guy's got a good stagger. And then it, the film ends with Roman and Minnie sitting in the waiting room. They've told the hospital it's their granddaughter. She's going to be fine after the accident. It winds up being Ellen, and she is pregnant with Son of Satan. Rosemary's Son. grandbaby, I guess, <laughs> which would be the third Grandson. part of this What's trilogy. Heavy? And yes. so they basically have like – Wheeling her off to the delivery room, and then they run the end credits. The end. Good movie. Yeah, it was no she devils on wheels, but you know, it was, I, I enjoyed them actually more than this movie. I was barely being. I, it was from last week when we did she devils on wheels, which was so awful. Right. Like I was watching this, even though I like Crazy. upon reflection, Wonderful. like not much happened. This, but this was like well put together. This was an actual film, right? They tried. I could have even seen this thing having a theatrical release, maybe if it weren't so oddly structured. Yeah, eh. Eh. I think it still would have wound up on eh. television, though. I think it would have been in theaters for a week, and they would have run it as the ABC Friday Night Movie about six months later and recoup their losses. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And since since Tina Louise was in this and Gilligan's Island, you know what I uh-huh. I was thinking. There's oh a couple ways that this movie is like Gilgan's Island. All right, let's hear him, Tim. <laughs> he's so excited. I'm not he's excited. so proud of what he's written here. <laughs> oh, he's rubbing his hands together, his thick sausage like fingers rubbing together. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't <laughs> stop it. So they you may not know this, but they hired a priest for the set of Look What Happened to Rosemary's Baby because everyone is very nervous and frightened and on edge. And likewise, on the set of Gilligan's Island, they also did drugs with the priest. But a bub. <laughs> no, don't don't do anything, <laughs> Tim. If you could work, if you could work in a cricket sound effect after that, when okay. you're editing, that would be awesome. Maybe you could do like a little hey. pull this bit of audio and do like a little video to promote the podcast, where it's just a like a, a tumbleweed. Going yeah. Hey. <laughs> listen, listen. And look what happened right. to Rosemary's yeah. baby. They called uh-huh. Tina Louise's character a two-bit hooker. Uh-huh. But on Gilgan's Island, they called her character a two-coconut hooker. <laughs> you know you love it. Tr- uh, John just trying left. to pretend you're not laughing. John has actually just left. <laughs> All right. Got any more, Tim? No, he's got to have a third one. You no, know, come on. You know you have another. You know you have a third I love three. You, 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 gotta, you know you're not going to stop it, too. No, I, 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 no, that was He's it. looking at it. I can almost read it in the reflection <laughs> no, of his glasses. You know, you're right. If you kind of squint, if you look in the reflection of his glasses, on Gilligan's you know, Island, <laughs> Tina Louise was, I can't read anything else. <laughs> no, I was, what I was going to say, that he passes out so much uh-huh. in this movie. Did you notice that? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. Yes. The moment Wait, is passed. Is that your joke? He passes out more than Eric Trump at a glue sniffing convention. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he passes out more than Sam Peckinpah on the set of Convoy. Uh, I didn't get the second one, but the Eric Trump thing was pretty funny. John gets it. I got it. 
Do you, John? John, I was, you at, I was at that Glee Civic convention. That's the only reason why I get it. <laughs> okay. Sam all Peckinpah right. was very drunk at the end of his career when he made Convoy. Is that all you wanted to say about it, John? Yeah, that's so, basically it. Time for revenge. Wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. I'll get you. I'll get you. Revenge. I'll get you. Revenge. 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 One of us will die. One of us will die. I will die. not, share, I will not let Cindy take oh, my one place. I will have my revenge. Who would be on the cover of Play, Playboy or Playgirl? Playboy right. or Playgirl cover. Who's going first? Because I'm, I'm going first. Because I didn't think of anything. I'm going first. Okay. This is just speaking to when I was a little boy. I've talked on this show, this very show before, about my watching TV habits and how I really wouldn't watch very much live action TV. It was all cartoons. And I would watch the only like live action old shows I would watch were Adam's Family and Monsters and stuff. But there was one I, I forgot to mention. I would watch Gilligan's Island. Oh. And the main reason I would watch Gilligan's Island <sighs> was because of uh, Marianne and Ginger. Because yeah. my... Yo, those ladies are pretty. I'm already sighing. Yeah, you should sigh because I don't have a good story. I'm just be like, I'm just gonna say, let's just put Tina Louise on the cover of Play Girl. Mm. Mm. Okay, because yeah. gender's just a construct, you know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing, guys. Yeah. Like, I just I right. got nothing. I got nothing. I watch this like, movie. I don't really have anything <laughs> except like kind of a story, and I think that. Um, Guy Woodhouse would be on the cover of Play Girl only because the actor who played him, George Maharis, actually appeared in Play Girl like three years earlier. See, what? When you made that kind of sad, hmm, I knew that you do some factoid like yeah. that. I'm like, oh, well, here's the and thing. I agree. That was actually what I was going to go with because he was so oily. Yeah, well, yeah, he was so, so oily and he winds up, you know, getting electrocuted with all that oil. Um, but they kept the cover. <laughs> um, but no. So I was like, Okay, so I'm like, you know, like I just like go through and I read like the cast members' biographies real quickly, and I see that he appeared in Playgirl, oh. and it said full nude, story. and I was like, well, I remember like the celebrity nudes in Playgirl, and they never like showed like there was never frontal nudity; it was just basically like rear nudity. You know what I mean? Like they show their asses. Yeah, you type but it in? no, you actually could George's- see you actually could see George Maharis's penis <laughs> in the 1973 issue. I was like, okay, okay. Let me, well, I'm looking it up now. George let is let looking me, it up. I can let tell. Me, let me close this. Let me close out this window because I don't know what emails I'm going to be getting now. <laughs> what, what, YouTube, uh, what YouTube videos are going to start popping up now? I don't know. I could see his pubic hair maybe. I don't know. He might not have a penis. Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> Oh, no, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Is, is your computer down like 1999 where the lines show up? One by one. <laughs> yeah. cool no, I was just I was I was scanning through all the Google images at once. I didn't want to commit to like just like here. <laughs> I don't think like that guy had a very distinctive appearance, George Maharis. No. He just was kind of like vague looking. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup, honestly. Yeah, he's yep. the guy oh. you'd meet in a gay bar, you know, on a Friday night. And would he be like, he, "I have a boy. I mean, I have a girlfriend. Yeah, it's, it's I have a girlfriend." In the morning here in my bed. I don't care if you're not gay. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> no, he's killing us. Shove him in the in the I wall. Mean, you're done. Yeah. Under, he's, he wasn't unattractive. No, no. He had a good, ripply, hairless, oily chest in this movie. There you, you go. Ask me it was, what he it was like very today. homoerotic. It was very homoerotic. If he had robbed yeah. a convenience store and you asked me today, who was that? What he looked like? I really couldn't tell you. I'd be like, white guy. Like he was naked, um, hit oil. Tim, what's your who's on the cover of Playgirl or Playboy oh in your iteration of this? I'm gonna have to say uh, Adrian because he was getting drugged so much. I think they uh, just drugged him, and that's that's one of the times he woke up and he's just naked in front of cameras. He's like, "What? Well, <laughs> like, trust us? You're, you're gonna be a Playgirl?" <laughs> When he gets when he gets uh when he gets like raped by um Donna Mills, mm-hmm. uh, she turns into like a bird lady for a second. Yeah, they have. The, oh. He has like this. He's has. A, he's like she's like a harpy. Yeah, he has like this. Uh, yeah, vision that. or That's hallucination weird. that he's like on a rock and she's yeah. And like they, there's like a close up of like a really fake looking bird claw scratching him because there's the bit earlier when like a bird attacks him like when he's when Peter's driving. Oh, there's a whole weird bird thing in this movie. Yeah, I do not. Are you making that up? No, no, be, no she was she was seriously like a weird oh, bird wow. monster. She like that? was so one of the cool one of the only uh, cool things that happened in that movie. I miss it. 
Yeah, yeah he she's did like, too. well, and by bird monster, she's like a, she had like uh, maybe glowing eyes, and she just was covered with like black feathers everywhere. Hmm. She looked like one of those dog boys, but with feathers instead of you know hair. Right. Jojo, the bird faced you. girl. <laughs> I have to trust you. Well, what about the Revenge sequel movie? Hmm. I'm gonna <laughs> not go <laughs> first. <laughs> Well, the revenge, my revenge sequel movie, because of course there is the book of Rosemary, there is the book of Adrian, and there is the book of Andrew, and the fourth one would be the book of Ralph, as in Ralph Cramden, <laughs> as in Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners, a character that was a bus driver. Oh. Now, the, the, the oh, we're getting the, somewhere the, the, when the when the bus drives off and there's nobody driving it is actually the spirit of Ralph Cramden. Because Ralph Cramden had gone to prison for attempted murder. He beat Alice within an inch of her life. Oh. And he probably wouldn't have gotten any time if he hadn't, in his words, been in front of a jury with all those dames. So no, anyway, so he was he good. was doing time for attempted murder. He was the he was the bitch of uh, another inmate called Big Guido. Well, basically one day Ralph gets shanked in the prison yard and becomes a spirit and he is driving this bus from the afterlife mm-hmm. anyway so adrian slash andrew is walking he's gotten out of los angeles because that's the last we saw him walking out and he gets a bus stops to pick him up and there's rosemary still on the bus and so then they start driving around and then eventually you see roman and minnie on the side of the road with this baby carrier um, they're not really paying attention that because Adrian's disguised as a bus driver. Um, Rosemary is has distracted the spirit of Ralph Cramden with a, like a raccoon salute or something like that. And so anyway, so Adrian says to Minnie and Roman, sorry, you have to have exact change. Well, they put the baby down while they're looking for the change. Adrian just pulls the bus out. They fall off the bus. He closes the door. They take the girl. They name her Velveeta. Okay. <laughs> no, because I always said if I had a daughter, I would have named her Velveeta. Just so I could say, Velveeta, wow. you get in this house now. Her full name would have been Vel- her, her full name would have been Velveeta Bourgeois, but anyway. So anyway, so yeah, so they raise her and she's supposed to be Antichrist. And really the worst thing she ever does is she goes to an all-girls Catholic school, and the worst thing she ever tells the nuns is that her homework blew into the East River. Wait a second. Back to- <laughs> that's a reference to your previous episode, the Patty Duke thing. With yeah, the that's stuff. right. Or, my, no, mother's, that's your mom. my mother's story. <laughs> it's your mom. Your mom is the Antichrist? Well, 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 it, would explain, it, would, it would explain a lot what happened to us it three explains. boys, I guess. <laughs> this whole show makes sense now. So anyway, so that's, that my, a, revenge. That was, that's my revenge okay. sequel. It was a long bus drive. Oh, don't even talk about long Timothy Hamilton. Well, I can, <laughs> a long hear, bus let's drive. Hear, let's hear yours. To the punchline. That's the long bus drive to the punchline. Oh, Tim. Anyway, I'm Tim. making a joke. Tim. People, in, and people, I want to know. people in glass houses, Tim. People in glass <laughs> houses. <laughs> I want to know if, mm. if uh, Ed Norton testified against Ralph. That's what I want mm-hmm, to know. Boy. No, but Trixie did. Uh, Trixie. Oh, that was a good Ed Norton. Trixie. <laughs> Thank you. I can do that. And I can do Dana Carvey doing John Travolta. It's like the baby's talking, but he's really not talking because it's like Bruce Willis doing the talking. That was disturbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so everyone, everyone Adrian, Adrian wanted revenge against is dead by the end of this movie, he thinks. And, and Andrew, Adrian didn't know that that woman had his child, if I remember, right? He wasn't aware that she had a baby. He just walked off he into the night. He thinks she's dead. Huh? In your sequel. In your sequel. He thinks she's dead. Yeah, he ran off. In your sequel. He beat up those police, ran off. So uh, he kept a low profile as he was conflicted about his true nature, either being Satan's son or being good. He wanted to piss off his father, so he got a job in politics with the Gary Hart presidential campaign. And he's the one who told mm-hmm. Gary Hart to tell the press to follow him around and see how bored they'd be. And... Uh, you know, I don't know if you know how that worked out, but they he was having an affair. The, the press followed him. Timely reference. Followed him yeah, right. Very timely. And Dan, <laughs> so uh, 
he, he got he got fired for that. <laughs> that was great, George. What, what do you have? No, George, no, no. You're done, Tim. George, what, is, what do you have, George? What do you have? I'm so curious, Tim. No, is, no, it, is there more, Tim? I'm not. No, George. What do you? He must have read something so bad. No. <laughs> Wait for some more. All right, Tim. Then he thought uh, he really the, the kids off in dad. Australia are not going to understand Gary Hart. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> Well, he thought he'd really piss off his dad and get a job with Jimmy Swagger. It was Adrian who told Swagger to hang out with sex workers like Jesus did and drive down the wrong side of the road, but the public just mm-hmm. didn't understand. And uh, Adrian got drugged by Jim Baker and passed out on the job. Hmm. Then Adrian got a job with a team of mercenaries to go to Paraguay and stop Mengele from quoting Hitler. But oh, this no. was all a ploy. This the team like- of cult- mercenaries were cult members and they drugged him. Then he ended up on the Jerry Springer show, show. He thought being on a cheesy afternoon show would piss off his dad. But he was drugged by Jerry, and he woke up on stage face-to-face with his, the nurse, Ellen, who was alive, and they'd done a DNA test on her kid, and it was his and Satan's. There you go. Does <laughs> and Satan this throw, movie does ends Satan with throw Adrian being drugged and being tied up backstage at the Silent Gold TV show. They were all cult members. Credits roll. Oh, but the son, Ellen's son, their son, uh, that kid grew up to be Alex Jones. There you go. Did they say in the movie it was going to be a girl? <laughs> well, no, they didn't. That's why. That's why I made her a girl. Yeah. Well, Alex is a name that works both ways. What's all right? <clears throat> so, uh, the first movie, of course, based on the Ira Levin novel, is called Rosemary's Baby. This one is called Look What Happened to Rosemary's Baby. The sequel I'm going to propose is going to be called What the Fuck Ever Happened to Rosemary's Baby. Okay. And the movie just kind of, we're just, it opens up, we're just kind of walking down a road. We're staggering down a road somewhere in California, maybe. We're just looking. We don't know what's going on. Up ahead of us, we see an incredibly gaunt man. He's staggering behind those. He's painted like a mime. Turns out, that's Rosemary's baby. He's no longer going by Adrian. He's no longer going by Andrew. He's going by Aiden. Because, you know, that's just a cool name now. Yeah. And actually, my revenge show, it's it's actually, it's like a TV series. On Netflix. And it's just him staggering from town to town. And he meets different characters. He has different adventures. He's always one step ahead of the law, and the law in this instance is his dad, aka Satan. Mm-hmm. And Satan is the actual the like the Satan, like not the Satan, the revenge part. Satan wants to revenge himself and just for on him for just being kind of a shitty son who like lives with his mom until he's like thirty and dresses up as a mime and goes to bad discos and stuff. <laughs> Satan's like, you're really making me look bad. And so it's just him walking around and he has adventures, and uh, it runs for thirty eight seasons. <laughs> It's, it's called Highway to Hell. Wow. It sucks. Wow. Yeah. Does he solve murders at least? <sighs> nah, nah. He causes them sometimes. He causes murders. Yeah, remember like in like the eighties because we're doing old timey references here. Somebody put like I think poison or broken glass into aspirin. Oh yeah, once I think. Yeah, it was fucking Aiden. He did that. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and there's one episode where he meets the Harlem Globetrotters, <laughs> and the Harlem Globetrotters just bitch the whole time that they didn't ever got to meet the real ginger. And he's like, "Let me see a picture of this real ginger." And he's like, "Is that my aunt?" But it, you know, she dies off camera. I don't even think she really died. I think she just went on to be in the cover of Playgirl. True. There you go. Yep. Boy, you know what yep. I gotta say? This show is really starting to gel. I think we're really, <laughs> I think we're really, really finding our <laughs> rhythm now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is the best episode ever. It is. It's just and getting, if you agree with it's us, it's getting better. If you right were in us. Australia at Seti Bimco oh. with a new oh, Tim oh. Q. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Tim. Write us the letter, Seti Bimco with the E at gmail dot com. Follow us on Instagram. It's Seti Bimco I'm with really an E Tim, at gmail dot com. If you find Seti Bimco online, you'll find the email. And we're on Instagram. And that's it, because Twitter blew up. And yeah. We are Facebook. on Truth Social. We're trying to get on Truth Social. We are. We are. 
<laughs> I did do that. And I forgot all about it because no one's there. And George has a movie for us to watch. I do. Especially. And the movie, I actually, I'll be honest here, gentlemen. I came in with a completely different movie that I was going to have us watch. Uh-huh. But all this talk up front about Australia and our burgeoning <laughs> popularity in Australia inspired me to do what I consider a bold choice. Ooh. And for next week, we're going to watch, it's available on Tubi, The Howling 3. Ooh. Ooh. You might be like, what does this have to do with uh, with uh, Australia? You know, I was just going to ask the New York Times bestselling <laughs> author, what does The Howling 3 have to do with Australia? That you read my mind. Well, in this you one, read my mind. They're, not, they're not werewolves. They turn into ard wolves. Like they turn into Tasmanian wolves, Ooh. I mean. Ooh. So they're marsupials. And it's literally a movie about marsupian werewolves. Oh, sounds wow. good, mate. Yeah. So, like, you get, attacked, yeah. so you, watch get, with us. you get attacked by one werewolf, and then another werewolf comes out of the pouch and attacks you, and then another werewolf comes out of yeah. that pouch and attacks you. <laughs> Ooh. And you think. And they're good at boxing. Yeah. <laughs> boxing. They drink fosters, all that stuff. Mm. So, Australia, all us listeners, all the listeners, this is for you. This is for you. And it, remember, everybody, it's not the Howling One, it's not the Howling <laughs> Two, it's not the Howling Four. It's probably not the Howling Five, which I'm not sure it got that far. It's uh, it's the Howling Three. One, two, three. But we are uh, uh, we have no mail. We have no mail. Nope. The podcast. I didn't receive any texts. You got no texts. This time, no texts. All right, we're done. Let's get another priest joke. Nope, sure don't. Tim, write one real quick. Uh, no. A Catholic priest walks into a bar. He didn't realize his cell was so small. I got one. I got one. All right. A rabbi. <laughs> that sucks, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, a rabbi, a priest, and a minister walk into a bar, and the bartender goes, what is this, a joke? Yeah. Yeah. Good one. That's, That's it. Good one. That's all I got. That's a good one, mate. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Look forward to next week, learning about the DNA <laughs> of these werewolves. <laughs> Do the werewolves kill any shepherd, shepherds? Shep, shepherds? All right. Let's say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 I'm going to hang up before it uploads. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. Well, every movie we watch in this, I just scan through it looking for bare breasts. And if I don't see them, I just watch the whole movie really quick, and then I don't really see the movie. So you got to slow me down with some boobs. Yeah. <laughs>